Let's see. Last time we ended talking about uh, internal energy balance or inter internal flow energy balance. If you remember what we did, we, we went through and derived this, um, this differential equation for Tm as a function of position. So what we're trying to do here in this internal flow problem is come up with an expression that lets us pr predict the uh, mixing cup temperature, the, the mean temperature, essentially. And that Tm is what we would then use when we're evaluating heat transfer between the wall and the fluid. Right? In external flow, we go back and we're doing from the wall to T infinity. That's always our driving temperature difference. Here in internal flow, we have to have some effective temperature that we're trying to, to transfer between. That's Tm. Um, OK, but we got this far, and we said, uh, yeah, we have a relationship here for dt dx uh, that's related somehow to the surface flux times the perimeter. Uh, we could equivalently write this the same uh, statement just in terms of the surface temperature by substituting the um, Newton's law of cooling here. Right, that's the same thing. Uh, but still, we have this differential equation that then we want to solve. So what we'll do today uh, first is finish talking about internal flow uh, kind of wrap this up, and then we'll go uh, into heat exchangers, which is a direct follow, uh, following on from, from this topic. Um, so picking up where we left off then, let's uh, write out our equation. What I want to do is go through the two cases, one where we have specified uh, surface flux, another where we have specified temperature, and just look at how the mean temperature changes as a function of position in, in those two cases. Um, OK, so writing out our. Uh, specified heat flux case, so that's Q dot double prime S times the perimeter is equal to M dot times C times uh, DTM dx. So again, I want to come, come up with an expression for TM. This is a pretty simple ODE to solve. Um, I can integrate both sides. So I do that. Uh, let's see this. Let's, let's uh, integrate with uh, DTM on one side will bring the DX over to the other side. So just rewriting this slightly, it's DTM on the left is equal to perimeter over M dot C times the integral of uh, Q dot double prime S. Uh, let's note here Q dot double prime S could be a function of X. So we'll just note that times DX. And then we have to come up with limits for the integral. So uh, what we're doing, if you imagine, right, we're, we're entering flow at the beginning of the, the internal channel, and then flow is moving through in the x position. As that function of x, we're trying to come up with an expression for t. So my integral to get to some temperature t is going to have to go from the entrance of the flow to my current position. Right? So that's going to be from x equals 0, x equals 0, up to x, which is my current position. Um, the temperature integral, we could do a definite integral there. Um, you could also do an indefinite integral, have the constant, apply your initial condition. Your initial condition is going to be what's coming in to the channel, right? This, uh, we could write a definite integral the same way. We just say T in up to my current position, Tm, right? It's the same, same idea. So we do this integration, we just end up with uh, Tm is equal to T in plus perimeter over m dot c uh, times whatever the integral is from 0 to x of q dot double prime s x dx, right? So that just kind of leaves it open. If you had some, some known expression here for surface flux, you just substitute that in, do the integral, and you have your expression. OK, so that's, that's the, um, yeah, that's the uh, known flux condition. Um, if I wanted to get this in terms of surface temperature, I could use the relationship H, uh, Ts minus Tm is equal to Q dot double prime S, and substitute that in as well, right, and, and get the same th kind of thing. So let's look, at, uh, let's look at a case where we have maybe this happening. We have a flow in a channel coming in like this. Uh, so this is our, f our flow, and this is position x. And then around the perimeter, I've got some uniform heat flux, uh, which we'll just call q dot double prime s. Right, so that applies around the entire perimeter. 
So what I want to do is plot out the temperature, uh, the mean temperature as a function of position. So let's make our axes. So I'm going to plot temperature T. Uh, so this would be T M. And as a function of position X. And then I'm going to note that at some point uh, we have the boundary layers here converging, right? And so that's going to be at X F D. Uh, so that's XFD thermal in this case. OK, so first, um, in this case where we have constant flux, looking back at this, Tm is equal to Tn plus constants times the integral of, let's say it's constant, dx. So what is my mean temperature going to look like as a function of position here? So we'll say we're coming in down here. This is T in. Uh, what is my temperature profile going to look? What shape is it going to be? Say that again. Linear. Linear. Right, because we're adding a fixed amount of heat flux as a function of position. So this is, uh, here this is T M. Uh, right, that makes sense. So now, if I if if you had maybe a specified um, surface temperature, right, that's going to be different because here we're saying there's a fixed amount of heat going in everywhere. If it's a specified surface temperature, that's a different matter. Uh, okay, let's let's look at this. But now, if we uh, look at the uh, surface temperature, right? So here, this is mean temperature. Let's look at surface temperature. Surface temperature at the leading edge. Uh, let me redraw this a little bit. So remember, we have this boundary layer that's forming like this. So the surface temperature at the leading edge is going to be related to the heat transfer coefficient. So at the very leading edge, where the boundary layer is 0, my heat transfer coefficient is essentially infinite, meaning my uh, surface temperature has to equal my mean temperature to make this 0, or, or to force this to be equal to this. right? Very large number, very small number has to equal a fixed number. Okay, So if we draw the surface temperature, uh, we know at the inlet, I'll use blue here, at the inlet it's equal. Uh, we didn't yet say, OK, I've got some fully developed bit here. Let's say it becomes fully developed at this location, x, f, d, t. So from the leading edge to the point where it's fully developed, um, that's going to kind of um, look like the boundary layer growth, right? As the boundary layer gets larger, this, this temperature difference can start to establish. So it's going to look something like this. Once it's fully developed, then that boundary layer stops growing. And so the heat transfer coefficient stops changing. That means this temperature difference is going to have to be a constant. Right? We're saying this remains a constant. So now that has to be a constant as well. So after that point where it's become fully developed, it's just going to track along exactly in parallel with the mean fluid temperature. So this is our TS. So the thing I, that's uh, maybe different about internal flow is in external flow, we always are kind of assuming that the, the surroundings are at the same temperature, that the fluid's not maybe changing temperature as it goes along. Here in internal flow, we can actually start developing relationships for how mean fluid temperature is changing, how the surface temperature is going to change um, related to that, that uh, mean fluid temperature. OK, so that's for the fixed flux case. Let's look at the uh, specified surface temperature. So the idea there was we'd substitute in this uh, rate equation, H uh, T S minus T M is equal to Q dot double prime. Um, so doing that, we get D T M D X is equal to perimeter times H over M dot times C uh, times T S. So T S can be a function of X minus T M. Right, Tm can also be a function of x, by the way. Um, so I have that equation. So what do I do with this? Now I've got dtm dx, some constants. This is changing with x. This is changing with x. 
So the way to solve this is going to be probably to do it numerically. You're probably going to want to take this equation, treat it like it's a state equation. You have Tm here on both sides. Treat it like it's a state equation and just march forward in position. So start with x equals 0. At x equals 0, presumably you know something about these, these properties. Um, then take a step. Um, and then look, predict your dt dx and kind of track along the mean fluid temperature. Um, so one example, you know, maybe, maybe you have even a case where Ts is constant. Ts is constant, right? This is not a function of x. You could maybe then ex solve this analytically unless h is changing. Right? If h is changing, now you have a nonlinear problem, or it's a yeah, nonlinear problem. So you have to still solve it numerically. So you have to evaluate step forward, evaluate step forward. The way I would do that, if it was a numerical problem, would be to say, I'm going to uh, look at my Tm, and I want to predict Tm at some index i plus 1 right, in space. i is my space index. Um, and that's going to be Tm at i uh, plus perimeter times h, let's say hx. So if you're evaluating h at some position x, that might be h, x, i, right? You sort of keep track of that thing. Um, perimeter h over m dot times c. Um, m dot shouldn't be changing, right? For internal flow, m dot should never be changing, unless you're somehow losing mass. Uh, but we have that, and then times our surface temperature. So that'd be t, s, uh, which may be a function of uh, x as well. We'll just leave it like that. So t, s minus. Uh, T M at I times our step dx. So if I was doing it numerically, I would do it this way. You have to kind of interpret it a little bit and think, okay, is T S changing? Is H changing? Is perimeter changing? Right? What is changing? And that has to be indexed as well. But just in its general form, it looked like this. Uh, we can look at the special case, I guess, with constant surface temperature. In that case, it does become kind of a simple solution. So there it would be uh, dtm dx equals perimeter times h over m dot times c times ts minus tm. So solving that, we can integrate both sides, um, separate it and integrate it. So that looks like integral from t in to tm of dtm over ts minus tm is equal to perimeter over m dot c times the integral of h dx uh, from 0 to x. We can integrate h as a function of x here as long as there's a, a solution to that. And you can essentially evaluate h bar. Um, that's all you need here. So if we did that, the solving this out would be t m is equal to ts minus ts minus tm, the quantity, uh, times exponential of minus perimeter times x times h bar over m dot times c. Right, so as long as we can get h bar out of it, we're OK. So what is this telling us? It gives me a, a mean fluid temperature, which is Starting at the, uh, with the surface temperature is kind of the reference. And looking at this temperature difference is something that's being scaled. Now we're looking at this um, kind of decay in the difference between the surface and the mean temperature. And actually, we, are, we already plotted that. Um, but it looked something like this. We had, uh, we had our constant temperature up here. And then it was like this, T, was it T in? So it kind of looked like this, right? Um, so this is the solution. Now you kind of understand where it's coming from. So we have this exponential. Uh, this temperature difference gets smaller and smaller as x gets bigger. OK. Questions on that? You'd want to do the, um, you'd want to do the numerical in the case where there's not an analytical solution like this that exists, uh, or it's, it's difficult. But the specific case would be, 
So let's say I don't know TS. I'm computing TS at every single node, right? So there's TS as a function of x. I'm evaluating that uh, along with the uh, evaluation of TM. So you're kind of making this, uh, this like two-step evaluation where you wouldn't explicitly have the equation for either one. Or let's say there's a, a relationship for H where you don't want to uh, just use H bar. Right? You just want to, you want to use the local H. There you could uh, leave H as a function of X, plug it in. If you want to use the local H and evaluate it, you would have to do it numerically, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Like that's when that's when it's happening. So, um, like in this case, if I wanted to capture the fact that H is really big here and then it goes to some fully developed, you'd want to do that using uh, the numerical approach. Um, otherwise, I guess what this is implying is you're using that H bar throughout. You're saying, here's my average heat transfer coefficient. You could compute that doing this integral, but you sort of have to do this separately get h bar, and then plug it into your solution. OK, so that uh, kind of wraps up internal flow. I think um, you'll have a chance to kind of go through a problem like this. Um, but the, the main concepts are that you know, you're, you're predicting the mean fluid temperature using that. You're predicting local heat transfer coefficients. And then you have to be really careful about knowing when it's transitioning from turbulent or laminar to turbulent when it becomes fully developed and like applying those principles. So um, that's kind of the only real differences with internal, internal flow. But, but by the way, I'll say like of all the things that we do in the class, I'm almost 100% sure, I'll say 99% sure, that you will use internal flow in some capacity in your professional careers, right? It, no matter what you're doing, you got to move something from A to B. And often heat transfer, fluid flow are involved, involved with that. So, um, so this is, a, I think, a really relevant practical topic for you.